I talk about portables and retro gaming a lot here on this channel. It's why I love things like the GPD XD Plus, which is for my money one of the finest ways to bring retro gaming with you wherever you go. But I get called out a lot for focusing on relatively expensive products. A lot of people in the comments say, hey, you can do this on a cell phone too. Why don't you talk a little bit about cell phones gaming on a cell phone? It's a more budget option for a lot of people. Now, as luck would have it, I get sent in a lot of products from companies like Gear best to review on my Brazilian channel. I kept this kind of content over there because I just thought they liked that stuff more. You guys are all about portables and retro gaming here on this channel. They like general tech stuff over on that other side. But then it dawned on me that there is an interesting intersection between the two types of content, namely budget gaming on cell phones. So we're going to start doing something different here on the channel. Can you game on this? All right, so what is this? This right here is a Xiaomi Mi A2. It's a budget Android cell phone, and not just any Android phone. This offers Android One, which is the pure Android experience, as some would call it. The Xiaomi Mi A2 has a 5.99 inch 2160 by 1080 screen. It rocks a Snapdragon 660 octa-core 2.2 gigahertz CPU. It's got four gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. It's got the current standard two cameras in the back, 12 megapixels and 20 megapixels, and a 20 megapixels camera here on the front. It goes right now for $215 on Gearbest. I'm gonna leave links down below, but that's just a bunch of numbers. What we wanna know here is, can you game on this thing? For that, we're going to pair the Mi A2 with this, the iPega 9017S, a Bluetooth controller. It goes right now for $19 on Gearbest. Again, links down below. So let's see how these things work together. As you can see here, the 9017S has this extendable arm here. It's got two shoulder buttons, D-pad, face buttons, start select, home button, and analogs, which is kind of nice. They're not exactly analogs, they're thumbsticks like you would see on a 3DS or on a PSP, but still works really well, if maybe a little bit too small for some hands. But let's see how these work together. So let's pair them up. So you're going to your Bluetooth, you hold home and X for a little bit, it's gonna show up there, you pair, good to go. So as you can see, I'm already controlling here with the D-pad. So let's go into say, let's try Super Nintendo first. Okay, so we got Super Mario World here. And here we go, I'm gonna turn it up a bit. All right, so let's do this. I wanna show you that, okay, so it's already working here. Let's uh, try to keep both in frame there, there we go. And that's where this comes in handy because I can just put the phone right there. Here we go. And yes, I'm playing stretched. I get a lot of grief for playing my games like this. I'm just used to it. I emulated on a PSP like this for so long that this is what feels more natural to me. So let's give this a try. Oh yeah, so here's one thing. The layout of the buttons here, as you can see, you got Y at the top, X down here, B here, and A here. This is the Xbox layout. Of course, it's opposite on a Super Nintendo. Ideally, you want to swap these in the settings for the emulator you're using. Now, if I want to just play, I can just kind of keep hitting here Y and B and treat this as X and A. Now, for Super Mario, this actually works really well because you don't use X and A that much in gameplay. It's mostly about running and jumping, really. So this still works really well. Oh, and I should have not been looking at the monitor here because I just died. Let's give this another try, because I, now I need to prove that I don't suck at this thing. All right, come on, come on, Mario, let's go. So I cannot tell, obviously, when we're talking about budget solutions, Bluetooth and emulating on a phone, input lag is a factor, and I maybe I'm too forgiving because most of my emulation was done on a PSP in the early days of PSP emulating, so I got, maybe I'm too forgiving. Some of you, the more purists, might notice a lot of input lag here from me playing the game. Honestly, I can't tell a whole bunch. It doesn't seem to affect too much of my place. Oh, god damn you. Come on. Now I need to prove that I don't suck at this thing. You suck! And then, you know, it's funny because I was looking at the monitor and I'm like, oh, you know what? I think I am noticing a bunch of lag now, but no, it's because I was trying to look at the monitor that I use as a viewfinder. Um, that introduced quite a bit of lag. But no, looking at the phone here, not too bad. All right, so that's it. that is uh, emulating a Super Nintendo game. Let's uh, now I need to finish this now. Otherwise, it's gonna bother me forever. Come on, run, 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 run. I'm pretty much speed running this thing. And boom! Super Nintendo is old hat by now. What else can we do with this combo? So let's see here. You can also emulate DS games on this. So let's see here, load new game. Let's try Dawn of Sorrow. Start game. Now, of course, the layout here 
is not the best for a game like this. Let's uh, see what we can do here. How about we change the screens to something. I'm going to the settings, menu, select screen layouts, about a landscape one by one. Does that, does that work for us? Okay, here we go. Let's start. Okay, can I load the game? Do I have some? Okay, here we go. Okay, so now we got now we got a DS game here. Now the interesting thing is we have what would be the top screen here, bottom screen here. L and R. I mean, R doesn't do much at this stage of the game because I'm right at the beginning. But with left, you kind of like do a dash like that, as you can hear. So DS also works really well. What about Minecraft? Can you play Minecraft with this setup? Let's give it a shot. Now the interesting thing about mobile Minecraft is that it instantly recognizes Bluetooth controllers and it changes the whole layout on the screen to match the buttons on the controller So you're not getting on-screen touch prompts as you would with most games So the moment I touch the analogs as you can see the d-pad the virtual d-pad is gone And this is running really smooth as you can see. I'm not exactly a minecraft connoisseur Okay, so now here's a problem with this game specifically. I only have two shoulder buttons here and for this game it requires more. So as you can see, the right trigger would be to mine, but this controller doesn't have a right trigger. It has a right bumper. So the right bumper swaps through your items here, as you can see, and the left goes back, but I can't mine. So Minecraft doesn't work with this controller. So this setup would be best for playing 16-bit emulators, things that would require only two shoulder buttons here. The phone runs Minecraft and PUBG, for instance, really well, but with this controller specifically, you're looking at emulating 16-bit stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this type of content here. I have a pile of stuff that probably can be used for gaming, can it? We're going to find out. And that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done.